welcome the co-founder of The Dirt, Sarah Smith, and the Chief Operating Officer of AutoCamp, Anjali Agrawal, and the co-founder and CEO of Arrive Outdoors, Rochelle Snyder, in conversation with global tourism reporter, Lily Germo. Hello, welcome, Sarah, Rochelle, and Anjali. It's really nice to have you here today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Sure. All three of you are in the business of connecting Americans with the outdoors. Actually, I love your sign, Sarah. That's great. Uh, it sets the scene. <laughs> Um, and so I want to quickly introduce what you each do um, for our audience. Sarah with The Dirt, which is the Yelp or TripAdvisor of camping since 2013, with over 40,000 campground listings, as well as over a million user reviews on your website. And last year you launched Dirt Pro, which is a membership uh, plan offering trip planning tools for, for folks heading out to camp, as well as discounts on gear. Rochelle with Arrive Outdoors, an outdoor gear rental company that has just been booming incredibly since last year, delivering camping gear to customers' doors across the US. And now you're also providing uh, B2B services for brands, um, including state mm -hmm. parks and retailers. Anjali with AutoCamp, uh, it's a luxury end of camping, offering um, amazing Airstream suites, tents, cabins, in Cape Cod, Yosemite National Park, the Russian River Valley, and additional locations coming uh, this year and next. So um, all three of you are perfectly uh, placed to tell us about this huge outdoor boom. Last summer, we were already seeing a major surge and now post-vaccine, for many, um, it's still the way to go in terms of uh, distancing and reconnecting with nature. And I could cite a lot of data, but you guys are, are better positioned to tell us. So let's talk about the trends and what you're actually seeing. What kind of boom and interest are we talking about um, in terms of your respective companies as we look ahead to the summer? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I, I would be happy to go first. Thank you, Lily. Um, we, yeah, as everyone else in the, the outdoor industry is seeing, we're just seeing a huge boom in people wanting to get outdoors. We think it's a trend that's not going to end, you know, when the pandemic ends, but will continue. Um, you know, we we did a, a survey of our users this past winter, you know, and discovered a lot of interesting things. You know, campers are more interested than ever now in exploring different ways to camp. So traditionally, maybe you've been a tent camper, but now people are getting a little more interested in exploring becoming an RV camper or a, you know, a, a different, a glamper perhaps. So we're seeing a big boom in people ex experimenting with how they camp. Um, we're right. expecting, we, our campers told us they, they plan to camp 71% more this year than they did last year. Um, and I, I think that's just, I think we're all seeing that trend. Um, and it's really encouraging to see, more and more people getting outside to um, experience the, the great outdoors that we have. Incredible. Rochelle, do you wanna go and, next? Yeah, sure. And I think from our perspective, what we have seen is not only the individuals who are getting out and um, engaging in the outdoors, but a shift in who those individuals are. So uh, most of the people that we see are what we consider experience driven consumers who are people that, uh, you know, if you ask them, who are you? How do you describe yourself? They're likely not going to say, I'm a camper, I'm a backpacker, I'm a skier. They're, they're people who um, are more casual, who um, haven't traditionally been served in the outdoor industry, who is mostly targeted enthusiasts. Um, and so we've seen a huge boom in this experiential consumer. And I think um, not only we've seen it, obviously the other um, companies that I'm sharing uh, the stage with has also seen it, but other brands and retailers. And so um, last year we started to see inbound um, with brands and retailers who wanted to start to access these consumers and uh, which led us to um, launch our B2B offering, which powers brands, uh, powers rentals for brands um, and retailers directly within their existing e-commerce infrastructure. Incredible. Can you mention some of those brands? Are you able to? Uh, not yet, um, okay. but uh, <laughs> yes, um, but soon. Great. Anjali, what kind of boom have you been seeing on your end with the, with the luxury end of, of camping? 
Yeah, so the unique appeal and popularity of AutoCamp combined with the pandemic, which has had people cooped up for months, has certainly led to a strong surge in demand that started last summer when we were able to reopen our properties with a completely contactless experience. And AutoCamp has always appealed to a broad spectrum of consumer from what we like to call adventure curious, uh, where they're first time campers, um, to uh, the, the other end where there's uh, avid backpackers uh, who just want to try a different type of camping experience. With the pandemic, what we found um, is that we were able to convert a lot more of those non-campers into trying auto camp. People just wanted to get outdoors. Um, according to research by KOA last year, 43% of leisure travelers were spending more time outdoors uh, and thought it was much more important as a result of the pandemic. So we were certainly seeing that conversion from people who were used to staying at boutique hotels now coming in and trying camping from the first, for the first time because of our amenities that combine the boutique hotel and make camping easy. Yeah, interesting. So where are people really going? Where, where are they interested in going? Are you seeing any patterns? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, certainly the national parks are extremely popular, iconic outdoor uh, destinations. So Auto Camp Cape Cod was our first property on the East Coast, right across the Bine uh, Shining Sea bike path. And that's really appealing for people to be able to take off on a bike from the property and head out into the outdoors. Um, Sarah, are you able to tell from your platform sort of where folks are, are heading mostly? Um, I think more than just where they're heading it's how they're heading so i think something that we're seeing a huge trend in currently is um boondocking or dispersed camping oh. um so what that means is campgrounds are really full because it's busy there's a lot of people who want to camp at campgrounds um so dispersed camping is when you can go into bureau of land management or national forest land and really for the most part within reason camp for free um and without a lot of people around so that gained a lot of popularity this year mm -hmm. um and you know it's 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 a great way to like take some of the pressure off these campgrounds and um open up more space for people to camp in sure very interesting so let's talk about the actual experience the consumer experience from pre-trip booking to actually being on the ground. Um, what are some of the ways that you're creating to make it as seamless as possible from A to B? And what are some of the challenges that have popped up in your respective areas? I think from our perspective, um, our model is we partner with uh, brands um, on arriveoutdoors.com. So I'll talk about Arrive Outdoors in this case, but we partner with brands um, and retailers to launch premium rentals. So you're able to access really, really premium products, select and rent those products online, and then have those products shipped directly to your door anywhere within the contiguous US. So the, you, there's no longer a need to go and um, stand and wait at um, the back of the store or to, um, you know, um, not sure what you're going to get or not sure if anything's available. Um, we're bringing this premium rental experience that very similar to like a Postmates uh, where you can just get everything delivered. I think everyone kind of uh, really uh, intensely adopted those models over the pandemic. So definitely accelerated this to say, well, the outdoor um, and travel industry really needed to think about how do we access how, and how do we provide the same service to those people. So um, allowing an e-commerce rental experience has really, um, I think, supported the, the consumer that we're going after. Sure. Um, Anjali, do you want to share your... Sure. Yeah, we really try to um, curate the experience based on three questions that we ask our consumers uh, in a pre-arrival call. Um, who are you traveling with? Uh, how would you like to spend your time? Is it lounging by the pool with a glass of wine or is it learning how to rock climb? Um, and what's your group service expectation from I like to cook my meals and light a campfire uh, to which is more of a do it yourself guest to I like my dinner prepared for me by the fire with a with a butler. And based on those three <laughs> questions, we're able to uh, have the guest experience be customized to reflect their preferences. Very interesting. Um, and any, any sort of specific challenges or, or is everything sort of, does it run as smoothly as possible since you have this window into what they're looking for? 
It's been it's been working great. We we get a lot of great feedback from our guests about how we were able to anticipate their need and sometimes even not just meet their expectation but really delight them, which is our goal. So it's it's been growing really well. Also, the whole contactless experience that we uh, created a model last year allows a guest to really either have a completely contactless experience without any interaction or have a much more uh, high touch experience where they're able to have help uh, with lighting a fire. So we really like to meet them where they are. So um, we're getting some really great questions, but first I wanna address an issue that um, was actually came up last year at Skiff's um, summit on the outdoors and um, it's about overcrowding. Uh, you know, and it was already an issue last summer in national parks as well as public lands and, and communities surrounding public lands with the problem of people, uh, you know, putting pressure on fragile environments, uh, but also not knowing how to behave in these environments. So are you tackling this issue? Are you facing it? And, and what are you anticipating? How, how are you going to address this? Yeah, it's a great, great question. And it's, it's uh, for, for the dirt is kind of what I mentioned before with making sure people have the tools um, necessary to get out there and explore different areas, um, making sure our campers know the leave no trace, you know, policies, um, encouraging them in every way we can to follow that. Um, but really encouraging people to not only go out disperse camping, but um, explore different ways, the, the different glamping, different types of camping. It used to be very, there's a traditional way people thought of camping. And I think that's changed a lot. And people have a lot more opportunities to do different types of camping now. Um, I'm gonna uh, take this this audience question. Early in the summit, Carl Shep Shepard uh, made a comment about RV and glamping trends, potentially not being permanent coming out of the pandemic. Um, what are your thoughts on this for the outdoor industry in 2022 and beyond? Do you think it's, it's going to outlast international travel? I, I, Go ahead. I, I think from from our perspective, it's not um, it's not an RV and glamping trend. It's actually a trend around consumer behavior. So, and consumers have truly shifted the way that they behave, the way that they travel, the way that they engage in the outdoors and um, I don't think that that behavior is uh, a short-term trend. I think that people have expectations to have lots of different experiences. Um, and I think the more that we introduce technology into our services, the more we introduce premium level um, access um, and affordability, um, engagement, integration with brands and retailers that we know and love, um, we're just expanding the pie and more and more people are able to access the outdoors, able to engage in travel. So I don't think that it's a short term trend. I think that it's actually a bigger trend that's um, attached to the consumer behavior. OK, exciting. Um, this question might go for Anjali. Do you list your spaces on Airbnb as part of your marketing distribution strategies? We uh, have listed our spaces on Airbnb, but it's certainly not. It's less than 2% of our demand portfolio wide. So we get more than 90% of our demand coming in through our direct brand channels. Okay, very interesting. So um, let's hop on to the next hot topic, which is making the outdoors accessible to diverse travelers. Um, as we know, since last year in particular, the travel industry has placed a, a huge lens on this. Um, now, Anjali, I, I, I personally dislike traditional camping, um, but throw in some creature comforts and I'm all in. <laughs> so <laughs> auto camp is right up my alley. Um, and so is the price point. But, you know, I do pause and think, am I going to be safe out there, um, you know, in these remote areas? And, uh, and that's the issue that comes up a lot for travelers of color, as you know. So um, I wondered what what ways is your company making the outdoors more accessible for diverse travelers and how are you tackling creating an experience that will make it safe for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. We believe that the outdoors is for everyone. We're strong advocates of that. So we partnered with a gentleman named Shelton Johnson. He's a park ranger at Yosemite National Park that's done some work with Oprah and, and had discussions with President Obama. Um, and uh, 
he he really is coaching us on how do we create an environment where all communities feel welcome. So even something as little as our websites um, showing people of color enjoying the outdoor experience to the photography and the artwork in our properties. How do we bring and make them feel welcome so that they feel that they belong, which is such a key component um, and really something that we're very passionate about doing. Very interesting. Um, any of you uh, want to address that? I know Rochelle. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Oh, I was just going to say, I, you know, totally agree with that. We see, you know, it, with 80 million people camping and that number expected to go up to 100 million, that's a lot of new people camping um, mm -hmm. and a lot of hopefully diverse people camping who didn't, who haven't traditionally camped before. So making sure, um, like Anjali said, that our platform is welcoming and representative, um, you know, we're, we've been working with consultants to make sure that we're we're tackling things. We're taking a look at our hiring within our own company, um, and for us that means hiring not as quickly because we want to have a diverse pool. We don't we want a bigger pool. So if it takes longer to get a more expansive pool, that's what we want. Um, so you know, doing that within our company and then making sure our platform is. Um, inclusive and welcoming. Rochelle, have you um, addressed this at all since have you had a chance in your, in your major boom that you've seen in the last year? Do you have a chance to, to figure out policies for making things more diverse in the outdoors? Yeah, I think as a company, it's it's a major goal of ours and an initiative of ours. I think in terms of how we are growing the company and how we actually get more and more people outdoors, we think about this through a partnership structure. So not just um, through our own channels, but thinking about um, like, for example, we partner with Washington National Parks. Um, so we integrate our rental services throughout the National Park Service so that anybody who's engaging with uh, Washington National Parks knows that they have an option to um, access premium gear to have that gear delivered across their um, across their state. Um, so it's, it's more about education um, in terms of uh, our service offering, um, but also making sure that we're partnering with um, organizations, companies, um, federal uh, and state based organizations uh, to expand um, access across the board. Okay, um, we've got a question, an audience question here. Have you seen a surge of remote workers camping and does any of the camp campgrounds accommodate their needs such as Wi-Fi? Definitely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, there, are, there are whole Facebook groups dedicated to how to work remotely in an RV or a camper. Okay. And my husband and I will actually be doing that when we take off in our van in about a month. Um, oh, nice. So it, it's become really big and popular and people can take this newfound freedom that they have, a lot of people have, um, and, and hit the road. So it's it's definitely a, a surge. Fantastic. Um, there's another question. We're getting so many great questions. What are your <laughs> brands doing to continue to convert consumers who had typically stayed in hotels prior to the pandemic? That would be for Anjali. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, certainly we're we're positioning ourselves as a property that combines the amenities of a boutique hotel with the feel of a camping experience. And uh, so customers, we meet them where they are and we're getting customers across the, the range of spectrum. Certainly our website is and our videos or pre-arrival videos are a great way to understand the experience and then the curated part that I referenced before. Uh, if you're used to a boutique hotel experience, we certainly can provide that. I think okay. if I can jump in on this yeah. one too, I think uh, for us, camping is one uh, is one segment, but the winter and outdoor sports is a, another segment that we um, support. So we actually partner and ship directly to hotels, um, resorts um, for ski, snow, apparel, accessories. So everything from your outerwear to your base layers. Um, so I think there's a an opportunity to service this consumer even if they are continuing to stay at a hotel or an airbnb or an auto camp um if they want to engage in different activities or a uh, campground on the dirt um they can still get all of their products delivered directly to them yeah and really just to, just, 
just to jump in on the, our three uniques, it's nature, which is being in some of America's most iconic destinations. It's um, designs or mid-century modern design, which brings uh, the simplicity and the ease of camping to the great outdoors. And then it's community. So it's uh, encouraging that connection to nature with our team members, with our guests and with our local community. Great. Um, so the future is looking very bright. We've only got about uh, a minute left. Um, I've got a question here. Uh, how do any of you, of you all speakers here today work with public parks um, in, in driving folks um, away from the traffic areas and handling against overcrowding? Did any of you work with, with public parks? I think Rochelle, you do. Yeah, we work with a lot of public parks. And I think one of the trends that we saw over the last uh, year was, I think pre-pandemic, we would see a lot of people flying from across the country, just outside to just the hottest and most popular national parks. Post-pandemic and during the pandemic, what we saw was a lot of road trips. So people driving um, to state parks, to national parks, maybe the less popular national parks because it was only three hours from them and not a flight and a two hour drive from them. Um, and so being able to service those people um, to their homes um, with product, but then also partnering with parks uh, across the country uh, to share that this is uh, an access point that they can actually um, get their gear um, without having to purchase and store um, those products. Thank you all so much for being here today and sharing your insights, Sarah, Anjali, and Rochelle. I know we all can't wait to get outdoors this summer. So <laughs> thanks for those super insights and take care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.